Good evening, everybody. I think that was a very, very thoughtful presentation by Dr. Prasanna Kumar, sir. Thank you, sir, for that. And very thought-provoking discussion between the two of the speakers. Let us look into, after understanding the snack and the technology and how the journey was, do we have a cutting edge outcome with oral semaglutide in people with diabetes and how do we put into perspective and use it into our clinical practice and implement in our lives understanding that there is no barring cost in our country because of insurance and wherein a lot of people and a lot of patients have already been taking it from various sources and of course since Jan it's available so how do you do that and that is where I would want to bring to your question bring to your notice about that it's not just one molecule it is not just one action at the level of GLP-1 it is actually more than six or so core defects that which are evidently seen or addressed by GLP-1 analogs at nearly all the levels and once the patients start losing weight of course there are multiple other benefits too which is addressed by these molecules and that's how we came into being and that's how this molecule was then taken up for pioneer studies and that was the very very purpose of GLP-1 in the body that was seen although there were two molecules 100 years back which were taken into consideration GLP-1 and 2 it was the one which showed that yes it can be analogued it can be made into a uh, drug for pioneering and that's how we have these studies wherein around approximate 10,000 people were taken and out of which around 6,000 patients approximately were exposed to this particular drug. There have been a lot of trial even in phase 3A or so and we have multiple series of Pioneer 1 to 10 that we have seen and importantly that how does this drug reduce HbA1c? What is the quantum if you have to look at the efficacy of this particular drug not just harping upon the weight, weight and weight as we heard earlier but also importantly if yes weight is reduced how much approximate A1c can be reduced and that could be up to 2.6 or 2.5 which is again a huge number and as was shown in one of the slides earlier, if this drug can be used by endocrinologists, diabetologists, by cardiologists, nephrologists, neurologists, and gastroenterologists, can this drug actually modify the disease is what is the question that we are going to ask ourselves. So if yes, how can it be used for that, whether it was brain or whichever other organ that we are trying to look into? And of course, yes, it is a disease-modifying agent, and as you see, multiple at least 12 arrows I can show you over here action from the heart rate to hypertension and other metabolic complications and the cardiac physiology that it can alter and give us a good pleiotropic action due to its anti-atherosclerotic and anti-inflammatory actions and that was where the CVOTs also of the semaglutide which resulted into approximately 21% reduction approximately showing comparison to placebo was seen and that is where we would try to wait also for some more CVOTs of semaglutide two more are underway they would be over by around this year end or so or early 2023 wherein it can reduce by 51% and 49% the all-cause mortality and the CV death rate for non-inferiority where it was checked for the pioneer six not only this, it also had a good amount of action for the prevention of the stroke also and it did show the reduction of stroke approximately by around 32% or so and the cumulative incidence plot of this particular both oral and subcutaneous semaglutide was seen and that this is one of a very important landmark studies again talking about the reduction and benefit it was also shown by dr rucha Mehta earlier this morning in the same very hall and when you combine the two studies of sustained six and pioneer six we also see that there was significant reduction in worsening of the egfr according to both and that it does help in the renal complication also not only this when you have addressed the weight when you've seen the slide on hba1c and you've seen something on 
the renal benefits? How does it address the cardiovascular effects? Let us look into some of the actions or the continuum of whether it's a low, medium, or high CV risk patient. It's the weight reduction, the systolic blood pressure reduction, the effect on lipid parameters, as was shown also by Dr. Prasanna Kumar, and of course the waist circumference going down. I think we also had a clinical case wherein uh, he said he saw a politician and or somebody else, but I think we've had people of class one officers who said that, no, doctor, I am the highest person in my organization, and it's a private organization. I do not want to look thin. And in another case, the wife actually had come that, how is it possible that my husband was wearing 38 pants and now he's wearing 34 centimeter pants? So, of course, we need to instruct the patient that, yes, you will lose weight, you will have thinning, you will reduce in size also, you will reduce in interest. I think that's an important family therapy that we need to do for patients on such drugs. And it's of course ideal for patients which could be either appropriate agent after second line failure for metformin, barring again the renal, the heart failure and the atherosclerotic disease. Of course it has superior weight loss reduction than compared to comparators. Reasonable to consider in patients who have who would benefit from weight loss. Of course, one example was given for PCOS, but we are having, we are waiting for a lot of other trials also for PCOS and other drugs in whom hypoglycemia is a concern. And I think it's been seen across these studies that it has been better or similar to at least cetagliptin, empagliflozin, and other GLP-1 RAs, of course, when you look at low risk of hypoglycemia. Explore challenges related to adherence. That's very, very important with oral. I think the one thing that we are looking at is having the drug 30 minutes before breakfast and having at least two sips of water, which may be equivalent to around 120 ml of water that we take it, and when you're considering to the switching to tablet form. Of course, high risk would be the first drug to be given. And many a times with heart, we have seen that patients with heart attack, chest pain, breathlessness, first land up in ICU with cardiologists. It is the cardiologists who start with us start even before that we have seen and the references are given of course two three days later once the angio is done i agree with dr banshi sabu on that particular point that these people are put on by them and in, i think in certain institutes cardios are writing more glp1 rs than even physicians this may drug may not require a dose adjustment at the level of uh, hepatic or renal and does not appear to affect or efficacy of oral in elderly population so that was the safety summary across pioneer trials that be careful when there is a history of medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, be careful with a prior contraindication, be careful about a pancreatitis or a CA pancreas. We have seen that certain patients of CA pancreas, patients those who are on this particular drug, they complain of pain abdomen. Be vigilant about looking into a USG or an amylase lipase. We've seen some people landing into such complications, but it is only the vigilance which is going to help us to bring or curb down the complications. As always was said, even though the drug is DCGI approved, we need to be careful about pharmacovigilance in these patients. I think that's the snapshot of this particular uh, talk, and I would like to summarize it by saying that across the global pioneer trials, it has been a proven efficacious drug with at least up to 1.5% of hb a reduction, although some patients may have up to minus 2.5 to 2.6, which we have seen even in our Indian patients in the last six months, at least from Jan 15th onwards. Across global pioneer trials, they have been proven to redu weight reduction of up to 5 kg. Our Indian patients, at least from Mumbai, have lost approximately 12 to 17 kgs, which is quite a huge number. And I would also like to add that these patients were not on SGLT2 inhibitors. Our patients who were on oral SEMA, when they had a contraindication for an SGLT2, those who were given this, they've lost on that 12 to 17 kg, which is quite a huge number for that population. Also, in people, those who were found to have hb a reduction, which was more than SGLT2, DPP4, or Lira, when added one or two oral drug, it reduces importantly even when the patient would need an insulin-based therapy. And also that efficacy of oral SEMA was established when given early in therapy. I think that's a very, very important statement that hit early, hit hard, be aggressive from the start. Given early or in therapy or late in therapy, regardless of hepatic or renal impairment. I think that's where I would like to end, ladies and gentlemen, over to chairpersons. Thank you.